welcome back. Today I'm on location here at Howard Marsh Metro Park. Uh, and this is a pretty cool metro park I pre-scouted a few days ago actually. And uh, it's located right along the Lake Erie. Um, just beautiful wetland habitat, which is of course one of my favorites to photograph in. Um, so I'm going to be here for the day. Uh, it's about late morning, but it's cloudy overcast skies, uh, which means it's going to be perfect for photography, I think. And uh, photographing some wading birds, maybe some shorebirds, and uh, any kind of warblers or songbirds that may be in the you know, the grasslands and all the cattails and everything around it. Uh, so lots of cool bridge crossings and stuff that gets you some intimate views uh, along boardwalks, um, up high above the water. And just, uh, yeah, it's going to be a really cool visit, I think. And uh, hopefully I get some photos uh, to take home, of course. Um, on my pre scouting trip, I had quite a big success. Um, I actually got some really good close-ups, uh, eye-level uh, images of a spotted sandpiper. I um, actually got some lifers in the form of ruddy turnstone and uh, just a couple others like semi-palmated sandpiper. And uh, it was cool seeing that. And the common gallinals were also present here as well. So that's cool stuff here. And I'm really looking forward to my visit. So let's go ahead once I get to the parking lot. It's a little bit of a gravel drive to get into the location, but you can see there's lots of cormorants. Looks like there's a grebe or something out there as well. Uh, just lots of cool stuff here. And uh, we'll be looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so, so far it's so good. It's been fairly productive uh, overall. Just, you know, just counting off all different species I've been um, encountering here at Howard Marsh. Uh, I'd say the main thing in the name of photos has been, I got a couple of very minimalist uh, portraits of both a great blue heron and a tree swallow. Uh, both of those, uh, the heron was just perched in some water. Uh, it was when it was much more cloudier than it is now. It's starting to pull through some sun, uh, right through the clouds it looks like up above. But uh, it was when it was much more overcast and it created this almost like sheet of like just blank gray slate. Um, of the water that is around the heron so just had a nice uh, pretty halfway reflection actually of the heron itself too which is pretty cool um, so I got some really cool minimalist shots of that and then much the same with the tree swallow uh, I was just perched on one of these little uh, cattails out here against the uh, the water here and uh, got pretty much above eye level just slightly above uh, what my perspective was above the swallow itself and so I think the shots are going to turn out pretty well I think uh, something that's just a much more shallow depth of field I'm shooting at about f7.1 and uh, yeah, I think they're going to be pretty nice, I think so. Uh, in the name of species so far, um, I've heard several soras um, over here in this other area where there's a bunch of the boardwalk and the bridge crossings. Um, I've yet to actually check that out for my visit here today. Uh, but I've been going along here because someone gave me the tip of there's some Dunlins here, which I did not see at my first visit here a few days ago for pre-scouting. And uh, now I'm like actually looking out over this mud flat, which is the prime habitat for a lot of shorebirds like this as they feed on the insects and everything. Uh, I'm seeing probably about more than a dozen of uh, these Dunlin uh, shorebirds, which is pretty cool um, as they are in breeding plumage um, given that it's spring right now. Um, nothing really in the name of photos, unfortunately, just because they're so far away. Um, I could try for something that's more like a small in frame, but I don't really feel like that's uh, really necessary. And plus it's getting pretty sunny at the moment, so that might be something if I were to try it, I might wait a little bit on and uh, see if the light uh, cooperates a little bit better um, than it is right now. Uh, but still, pretty cool find. Uh, it's a great shorebird. Uh, you know, just a nice one to find during migration here. And uh, pretty cool to put on the checklist for the visit here, so. Uh, other than that, there's been not too much else. It's been relatively quiet. Um, did hear a coot, or actually did see it rather, um, over by the great blue heron um, down that way when it first started. Um, I believe it was actually the first species I saw for the day, uh, which is pretty cool. Just, just one single American coot. But I think with that, I'm going to keep going here. Uh, I'm going to check out over here because I had real good luck, like I said, with the spotted sandpiper and some other birds over there on that mud flat. It's very far away, probably. You can't tell from here. Um, but I had some good luck with that, and uh, maybe I'll get some more eye-level shots um, from that perspective over there. So uh, I'm going to keep going here and see what else we can find here for today. All right, so a couple quick updates here. Uh, I got some cool, pretty good shots, I think, of uh, some Canada geese goslings. Uh, so those are pretty cool. Just nice seeing some baby animals, of course, with it being this time of year. Uh, this is naturally something you're going to come across. And what better than to do the Canada goslings just because of how prevalent and common they are as well. 
Uh, so got a few shots of those. Um, I seen at least two spotted sandpipers um, over in the mud flats, like I predicted. But um, once again, the lightning is just a little too harsh, and compared to the shots I got previously uh, a few days ago, it's just simply not worth it to really try it again. Um, th those shots I got were much much better than these. Um, so other than that, um, I just seen some turns and some ring build gulls out here um, along the beach, and that's pretty much it overall. Uh, so I'm going to keep going here and turn around. Um, there's a little bit left in the trail and those boardwalks and bridges and I'm going to check out those as well. Alright, so now I'm on the boardwalk portion of the marsh here and this takes you, like I said, right through it. It's pretty awesome views of it. Um, during my pre-scouting session a few days ago, I did see some common gallinoles and I heard them pretty pretty loudly actually off the side here and all this, uh, this brush and everything where they provide dense coverage for uh, real species like that. Um, other than that, uh, basically backtracking now to uh, when I was over there at that end of the marsh, um, I did happen to see probably a lot more uh, Dunlins than I could imagine. I mean, there's probably upwards of almost 50 of them um, that kept flying in. And I got a little surprise actually. Um, some passerbys were uh, very friendly. They actually pointed out three ruddy ducks. And they're pretty easy to view actually um, and spot from afar because they have an upturned tail. Um, that you can see from a distance and a nice big kind of like thick bill and uh, the males have a nice like a cyan color a really good like teal I guess color um, that is pretty obvious to spot um, from afar especially when it's breeding time um, so it's pretty cool to see that but now that I'm on here on the marsh tons of barn swallows um, there's all these muskrat uh, little platforms the muskrat homes that they live in and so there you go so yeah just lots of cool stuff out here um, not even from wildlife photography standpoint, I just love all these reflections that all these, all these uh, stalks give as well, so that's really cool. So I may try something with little patterns and textures, honestly, just using my telephoto lens, um, since that's the only lens I have with me and my car is all the way across the water here. But um, lots of cool stuff, lots of cool just wildlife observation over here, and I'm going to you know, stick it out for a little bit and see what I can find on the boardwalk. And I'm um, you know, probably shooting probably this way just because it would be much more front lit for any subject matter that would be on this side uh, versus this side, which is going to be much more back lit. Um, so that kind of gives you some options of like stuff you could see and uh, how you may want to expose and photograph them for too. So you know, it gives you some options, which is pretty nice and different choices uh, to capture the images of any wildlife you may see. All right, so now I'm on the opposite side of the marsh here. Uh, this is actually the section, uh, the other half that I did not check out for my pre-scouting session. Uh, so this is all new to me. Uh, it's pretty cool. You get to see uh, the platforms that people make for uh, osprey so they can nest here because uh, they like to nest up high on marshes like this and hunt for fish. Um, yeah, so just stuff like that. Um, I saw a really, really tiny, it was literally a thumbnail size. Uh, it looked like a painted turtle. Uh, just a small baby one, uh, which is pretty cool to see. I've never seen something a uh, turtle that that small, so that was really awesome. Uh, but so far, I'm just checking out. Is it an eagle in the tree? I do not know. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. All right. So what are the chances here? It's actually an osprey, uh, which is awesome. Uh, it's perched over in this really tall tree over here. Uh, looks like it's just preening and stuff. Um, not really too much activity or behavior from it right now, but um, I'm going to stand around this kind of stand over here on this gravel path and see if it, you know, takes off or does anything else uh, where I can get maybe even a closer look at it perhaps, but um, we'll see here. It's still really cool to see that, you know, nonetheless, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, just from a distance, it looks so dark. I didn't see the white splotches on the wings and on the back um, that could, you know, and of course the head to uh, signify that was an osprey. Uh, but still, nonetheless, it's pretty cool. It's stuck over here. Let's see if I can identify it. It's probably just a mallard. Actually, it looks like a coot. I think it's a coot, so. Still, really cool to see that. Um, I'm gonna keep going here. Uh, I think this trail actually wraps around the entire marsh or something. It looks like it's a several mile trail. Uh, so we'll see how far we can go here at Howard Marsh and uh, see what the rest of the you know place brings. So this could be really, really something special, I think. So I'm gonna keep going here and talk to you in a little bit. All right, everyone, let's conclude today's video. So I uh, turned pretty well, actually, just the entire hike of the Orange Loop uh, Trail. It's called the Egret Trail. It takes you literally around the entire Metro Park here. And uh, it's nothing too crazy that I was really gonna, you know, keen on photographing or uh, even scanning for that matter just because uh, most of the birds are way far out but it did give you some nice views of uh, Lake Erie and the neighboring uh, Metzger Marsh Wildlife Area uh, which is bordering most of this metro park. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. 
Um, the photos I got at the very beginning of the day were pretty good, I think. Uh, with some of the barn swallow, the great blue heron, and uh, a few surprises in terms of the uh, observations I got also for today. Uh, but you know, it's a really great, beautiful metro park and highly recommend it if you're in the Lake Erie area. Um, it's just beautiful wetland and marsh habitat along the coast here. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This has been Howard Marsh Metro Park. Until next time, make sure you get out here.